Hello, Scott here, and uh, I'm going to show you my uh, first really successful uh, Mooner lander using stock parts. Now, this is using the 0.13 version of Kerbal Space Program, and I take advantage of some of the new tricks in it, uh, some of the new features, to make this uh, successful. Now, we're playing this at accelerated speed. But basically, what we have is a core booster with the um, vectoring thrust uh, engine in the middle, and uh, around the outside, we've managed to strap on uh, liquid tanks. Now, the liquid tanks have fuel lines that are running into that central one. So even though I'm running, I'm not actually using any fuel until the um, until the um, I eject these external tanks. We also have an auto SAS unit, which is using the thrust vectoring nozzle in the middle and the three wings or the six wings on top. Um, which will uh, double as my landing gear later. So those main engines are now ejected. Basically, I'm now going up fast enough that the small thrust that's left here will get me up to near orbital velocity. And uh, the upper stage will have more than enough fuel to get me uh, not only into orbit and then take me into my uh, lunar injection orbit. The, the upper stage uh, is basically my first really successful lander design that uses entirely stock parts. It uh, has basically the, the low power thrust vectoring engine in the middle and attached to those, attached to the, well there's a fuel tank in front of that and around the, that we have three other fuel tanks attached by the lateral decouplers. These tanks feed uh, into the central tank via fuel lines and uh, the tanks themselves have a couple of winglets on each to provide actual contact landing gear. So yeah, you see I get myself into a nice uh, 100 kilometer orbit here. Um, and as we, as you know, we've used the usual trick of we orbit until we see the moon. And at that point, we uh, start boosting towards the moon. Not necessarily uh, too aggressively, but, you know, quickly enough that it'll get us... Uh, into a transmunar injection. Now, now that we're in space, we have more than enough thrust uh, to get us anywhere. In fact, actually, this this uh, lunar lander design will fly on the on uh, against Earth's gravity. Um, the only problem being that if you get any speed up, the fins really make it hard to fly. So it's a lot easier to fly it uh, in the vacuum. Oddly enough. Um, I recommend using the auto SAS as well, although in theory the ship would be flyable without it, but I found it very top heavy and very hard to control, so uh, I'm actually quite happy to trust for the, to the computer for the first 10 kilometers or so of altitude. So yeah, that's us. Uh, we're heading off towards our transmunar injection orbit. Uh, there we go. We just stop the burn when we're just past the orbit. And I cut out, obviously, the boring bit of trying to get in there. And this was a really nice capture. The the um, periapse on the, on the moon was pretty darn close. Once we get in there, we, uh, again, burn retrograde to, uh, to bring our orbit into a, a captured orbit. We're currently in a hyperbolic trajectory, but as we burn to slow down, we come into an elliptical orbit. And... Uh, you know, why bother stopping there? We want to land this sucker, so we'll keep burning until the the orbit ends up with the periapse inside the planet. And uh, there we go. It comes up nicely. Um, you see, we have tons of fuel in this, so we, we really don't need to worry too much. I As I was landing, I noticed this kind of neat crater, and I thought, hey, uh, maybe we can actually aim for inside that crater. And uh, sure enough, you just got to be patient enough. You just burn your thrust. One of the really awesome things I think I've mentioned in point one three uh, KSP is that you can actually view the artificial horizon while you are in uh, the map mode which basically may lets me do these kind of maneuvers you see i've adjusted the orbit so it comes down right in the middle of that crater and then i rotate the spacecraft around 90 degrees and thrust up a little so that i'm uh, actually aiming towards the middle of that ginormous crater uh, i had no idea what the surface is like down there but uh i figured i would just you know, demonstrate some uh, plane change maneuvers. You see, this is kind of delicate. It's it's kind of slow here. Plane change maneuvers basically need a lot of fuel. Um, 
the, and uh, the more fuel you, the, well, the faster you're going, the more fuel you need. Believe it or not, if you're doing some plane change maneuvers, which is basically changing the inclination of your orbit, sometimes it's actually more efficient to boost into a highly elliptical orbit and then adjust your inclination out at a periaps. So yeah, that's us. We've set our landing um course up we know where we're going there is the moon so we're going to follow this thing in and again i'm going to skip over a lot of boring stuff here because it really does take a long time the whole mission was about half an hour um so yeah you can see that we have uh, about two and a half tank full tanks of uh, fuel we haven't even hit our main central tank yet we're still running on these uh, external tanks which uh, once we land we can actually discard if we like this is me testing the boosters because I want to make sure, I want to get an idea of how quickly this thing decelerates. Uh, also, you know, with this design, the fuel tanks are actually quite heavy when they're full. So being pretty liberal with your fuel burn on this lander design is actually to your to your advantage. You want those fuel tanks to basically be running on empty as, as you land. If you have uh, fuel tanks when you land, it will put a lot more stress on those winglets and you might find yourself basically crashing uh, the lander and damaging your main motor. So you know, don't be afraid, you're going to leave that fuel behind. Uh, obviously don't overdo it because you do need some fuel to get back. But, uh, I mean, let's face it, you know, you've got a whole fuel tank there. Uh, it will give you a lot of maneuvering budget. So, yeah, we're down to, like, four and a half kilometers. And uh, I think I'm just going to play this without uh, any more edits. I'm just going to run the rocket very slowly. We're just aiming to... Uh, we have to obviously aim to bring the velocity to zero at a landing time. Um, the other nice thing is that this crater was in full... Uh, sunlight so I will be able to see the shadow if you are trying to land on the moon you really want to have the landing site be in daylight because if you can't see that shadow you're gonna struggle to figure out how high you actually are um, for the next version guys developers I really would like some sort of radar or lidar altimeter um, it would really help. <laughs> I'd also like a digital readout on my uh, acceleration so I can actually figure out the best way to land. But, you know, one thing at a time. Mm. Oh, yeah, and uh, developers, yeah, if you want to uh, add some mode where the artificial horizon rotates according to the view, that would also be helpful for adjusting the landing conditions. So, look, we're down to 500 meters. The velocity is... Uh, we're trying to keep control of the velocity here. We don't know... I don't want to hit the planet at any speed. I don't want to find the, the sh planet rushing up at me. But uh, we still have plenty of spare fuel here. We're doing fine. I'm trying to adjust the lateral velocity by thrusting a little off-center to uh, make sure that I don't have too much sideways speed. Yeah, 150, 140, 130 just sitting on this pillar of flame and uh, yet at this point again my heart starts beating like a <laughs> crazy thing you know this and EVE Online are the only two games that get my heart racing like this anymore I, I don't know I think it's because you have to spend 20 plus minutes getting your ship to this actual thing and if you crash there's no save you basically have to go back to the start it's just like EVE you lose your spaceship you know you have to buy it again you've wasted your money um and so, so it's all about the commitment. And there's the shadow. And I just basically adjust the thrust and I landed almost perfectly. I am so happy. This is an entirely stock part design. You see the decouplers, you know, three fuel tanks, um, and the, the winglets are the main landing gear here. And it's a nice wide base. I think it works pretty well in the end. So now to get back is pretty easy. I can jettison these tanks. Um, I should have turned the camera so I could see those there, but this thing has a fuel, full tank of fuel. This has, you know, this could achieve escape velocity from here, but we're just gonna go straight, uh, straight up until we escape the lunar gravity. And that's a somewhat retrograde, but uh, not perfect, you know, so, once we escape the moon or gravity, we basically, 
again thrust retrograde to bring our um, perigee down there we go and that's us we are now on a return trajectory and we have loads of fuel left if we like um, as it happens you know um, as I was coming down I, I looked at the exact landing site you see where we are yeah, it turns out I'm landing pretty close. I, th I think that is pretty close to the launch center. I en ended up saying, at this point, maybe I can hit that island. And uh, sure enough, I was able to deflect the orbit enough to hit this island and uh, return the guys safely to the planet. Um, <laughs> there we go. A fully successful mission using entirely stock parts. I can make the craft file available if anybody wants to. Uh, I could also make a very boring, unedited 30 minute version available, but to be honest, I don't have that much to say right now. So, yeah, see you guys later. Have fun. Bye.